In this video, we're gonna see 10 of the most famous and established lazy portfolios, and I'm gonna explain exactly how you can build them with ETFs and index funds. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the term, a lazy portfolio is a simple portfolio that requires very little maintenance. The typical passive investing strategy for long-term investors. Two of the 10 portfolios are gonna be dividend-oriented, and as you'll see, with these 10 portfolios, you're gonna cover basically all possible cases you may have. So drop a like, sit back, and let's go straight to the list, starting from the most diversified portfolio. Position number 10 belongs to the all-weather portfolio from Ray Dalio, the founder and manager of the world's biggest hedge fund, Bridgewater. This portfolio is not made for the highest returns, but for the highest sleeping comfort. Because just as Drake's $400,000 mattress, the whole weather portfolio is made in a way that you can always sleep well at night, even during the worst crisis. Dalio created it based on two macroeconomic parameters. On the one hand, the prices of goods that can rise or fall, inflation or deflation. On the other hand, we are either in a growing economy or in a shrinking economy. Using these two parameters, Dalio identified four economic environments and built a passive portfolio that performs well in all four of them. If you invest from the US, 30% is going to go to VTI, the Vanguard total stock market, 40% on long-term bonds with TLT, the iShares 20 plus years treasury bond, 15% on intermediate term bonds with IEI, the iShares three to seven year treasury bond, 7.5% on broadly diversified commodities with DBC, the Invesco DB commodity tracking, and 7.5% specific on gold using GLD, the SPDR Gold Trust. If you invest from Europe instead, this table shows you the right European ETFs to use, including name and ISIN code. You can pause the video if you need, and from any European app, you can usually just search for the name and then ensure you get the right ETF by checking the ISIN number. In the last 30 years, the all-weather portfolio delivered 7.34% annualized returns, which stayed pretty consistent around 7.5% even in shorter periods, except last year, that so far have been 8.73%. If we compare the all-weather portfolio in orange with the S&P 500 in blue, we can see that the S&P 500 performed much better, but the all-weather portfolio showed much less volatility. Number nine is the dividend income portfolio, a well-rounded, income-focused investment strategy that combines three asset classes that produce income, high-yield corporate bonds, real estate, and dividend-paying equities. To build this portfolio, you're gonna need three ETFs with equal weight, 33.3%. The iShares iBox Dollar High-Yield Corporate Bond ETF with ticker HYG, the Vanguard Real Estate ETF, VNQ, and the Invesco High-Yield Equity Dividend Shivers ETF, PEY. HYG is going to give you exposure to a diversified number of high-yield corporate bonds. VNQ gives you access to a wide range of real estate investment trusts, and PEY targets high-quality dividend-paying stocks with a history of increasing their dividends over time. Obviously, you can switch PEY with another dividend ETF that you like more. I'm giving you this just because it's the official one of the lazy portfolio. The dividend income portfolio returned around 6.54% on average in the last 10 years, and 10.85% in the last 12 months. If you see the long-term performance of this portfolio compared to the S&P 500, just like before, you're gonna see that the S&P 500 performed better. But we have to say this, the S&P 500 is, for itself, one of the best lazy portfolios. Let's move on to the number eight, the Coffee House Portfolio, which is an easy peasy investment strategy developed by Bill Schultheis, a financial advisor and author of The Coffee House Investor. A simple, low cost, diversified portfolio that returned an average of 5.7% in the last 10 years and 7.5% in the last 30. Obviously, a good investor should also consider longer time frames. So to give you an idea, in the last 54 years, the average return per year was a nice 9.62%. The composition of the coffee house portfolio is going to be 60% stocks and 40% fixed income. The 60% equity is gonna be divided into six ETFs that cover 10% each, respectively. You're gonna have 10% large blend, 10% large value, 10% small blend, 10% small value, 10% international and 10% real estate. The remaining 40% is fixed income through the bond market. If you wanna build this portfolio from the US, you can use, for example, either Vanguard or iShares ETFs. While if you invest from Europe or the rest of the world, it's probably gonna be easier for you to find iShares ETFs. So you're gonna find them all here. And I'm also gonna give you an index fund alternative if you don't want to use ETFs. Feel free to pause the video if you wanna read or note all the ETFs that you need. And by the way, if you're investing from Europe, depending on the country, you're gonna have a different ticker. So I suggest you just search for the name in your brokerage app 
and you'll find it. Moving to number seven, we have the lazy portfolio from the CIO of Yale University, David Swanson, which is actually called lazy portfolio like the title of my video. The distinguishable characteristics of this portfolio is that it allocates 20% to international equities, 20% to REITs, and that it offers two different bond ETFs instead of one. So. Let's say it together. 30% is going to go to VTI, the Vanguard Total Stock Market. 20% goes to real estate with VNQ, the Vanguard Real Estate ETF. 15% goes to an international developed markets ETF like VEA, Vanguard FTC Developed Market ETF. And 5% to the emerging markets through VWO, the Vanguard Emerging Market Stock ETF. By the way, for these Vanguard ETFs, you also usually have iShares alternatives. So just let me know in the comment section below if you need something. Now. The last 30% is going to be 15% shorts or intermediate term bonds like IEI, the iShares 3 to 7 year treasury bond, and 15% TIP, the iShares TIPS bond. In case you missed it at the beginning of the video, TIPS are treasuries that are inflation protected, namely their principal increases with inflation and decreases with deflation. The David Swenson Lazy Portfolio delivered an average of 6.26% per year in the last 10 years and 7.78% per year on average in the last 30 years. Notice here it's calculated using VEU instead of VEA for the international ETF, but it doesn't really make a difference. Number six is the famous free fund portfolio from Bogleheads, which are investing enthusiasts of the Bogleheads community that honor Vanguard founder John Bogle. I already published a video entirely on this portfolio because it's actually a pretty famous one. So if you wanna go more into detail on this, you can check out my video that I will also link in the description below. The three fund portfolio consists of three parts, total US market, total international market, and total bond market. And the percentage depends on your age. So the older you are, the more you should lean on bonds. I took the time to create this table for you that shows you how you can compose your three fund portfolio using ETFs from Vanguard or using index fund version from Vanguard, Schwab, or Fidelity. Or also how you can create the portfolio from Europe. If you buy ETFs from the US, you're gonna need VTI, VXUS, and VMT. VTI is the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund ETF and covers the whole American stock market. VXUS is the Vanguard Total International Stock Index Fund ETF and covers the international market. And BND is the Vanguard Total Bond Market Index Fund ETF, which covers the bond markets. If instead you live in Europe, you can take the iShares Core S&P 500 UCITS ETF for the US stock market, the iShares MSCI ACWI UCITS ETF for the international market, and the iShares US Aggregate Bond UCITS ETF for the bond market. Yeah. European names are a bit longer. If you still don't have a brokerage app, you can download Trade Republic and get a share with a value up to $100 by using the link in the description below. And you're also gonna get 4% safe on your liquidity which is actually great. Number five is Rick Ferry's Core 4 portfolio. Rick Ferry is a Boglehead author and investment advisor. As the name implies, it consists of four low-cost funds and it's basically the three fund portfolio plus real estate. So it's suited for whoever likes the three fund portfolio but wants a bit more weight on real estate. Before telling you how to define the weight of the single elements, let me show you how it's composed depending on the index fund you want to use or the ETF. As always, you can pause the video if you need to read all the ETFs but I want you to notice that using Vanguard ETFs, you're gonna have the same three components of the three fund portfolio, VTI, VXUS, and BND, plus VNQ, that is the Vanguard Real Estate ETF. Now, how do you define the percentages? You need to start from your bond allocation. And this is the only thing that you actually have to determine by yourself. There are some general rules, like the one that says that the percentage of bonds must equal your age. But considering that we are living at least 10 years longer than when the rule was created, you could also use your age minus 10. So if you are, for example, 50 years old, you should have 40% in bonds. Ultimately, of course, it's your decision. For the allocation of the other positions, Rick Ferry suggests that you take whatever you don't have in bonds and you allocate 50% of it to US stock markets, 40% to international and 10% to REIT. So in the example before, you would have 40% in bonds, 30% in US stocks, 24% in international and 6% in real estate. Let's move now to the dividend paying stock portfolio. This portfolio consists of 10 dividend paying stocks that generate constant money flow in the long term. The dividend stocks have a weight of 10% each and are Procter & Gamble, 3M Company, Coca-Cola, Walmart, Colgate Palmolive, Air Products & Chemicals, IBM, Kimberly Clark, Emerson Electric, and Johnson & Johnson. When it comes to performance, this portfolio delivered an average of 8.2% per year 
in the last three years and granted a 2.99% dividend yield in the last 12 months, with an average that was always around 2.5 to 3% in the last 10 years. Here, by the way, you can also see the dividend yield of the single companies in the last 10 years. You're welcome to pause the video in case you need to see something specific. Obviously, you can also choose other stocks and there are several dividend paying companies that have been paying and increasing their dividends for many years. For example, PepsiCo, ExxonMobil, Chevron, FV, Realty Income, Lockheed Martin, and Cisco Corporation. Many of them are dividend aristocrats, namely companies that have increased their dividends in each of the past 25 years. Let's move on to the top three. And at number three, we have the second grader starter portfolio. This is a lazy portfolio by Paul Farrell designed as a simple portfolio to follow for beginner investors with small capital and a long investment horizon. The name comes from the fact that Farrell suggests this portfolio to a second grader who received a $10,000 gift from his grandmother. The portfolio is composed of three ETFs and is actually pretty similar to the three fund portfolio from Bogleheads. And in this case, there is more weight on stocks and also with a different ETF for the international stock market. The biggest weight with 60% goes to the US total stock market with VTI, followed by 30% on the international market with VEU and 10% on the bond market with BND. In the last 10 years, the second graders portfolio delivered an average annual return of 9.03% compared to 10.91% of the S&P 500. I attribute the higher performance of this portfolio compared to the previous ones to the fact that here you have more US equity market and less bonds. Still, bonds remain an important part of a portfolio when you're getting closer to retirement. We are getting closer to the end and in position number two, we have Warren Buffett's 90-10 portfolio. This portfolio follows the guidelines that Warren Buffett has written in his will for his wife's trust in the 2013 letter to Berkshire Hathaway shareholders. Buffett's will says his wife should have 90% in a low-cost S&P 500 index fund and 10% in a short-term government bonds fund. The basic strategy is to own a major slice of all American businesses that are bound to grow in total with a small safety margin through the bond market. According to Buffett, this portfolio is superior to those attained by most investors, whether pension funds, institutions, or individuals. So, how do you build this fund? It's really easy. 90% on VOO, the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF, and 10% on BSV, the Vanguard short-term bond ETF. As you can see, Buffett has a profound trust in American stock markets and suggests just 10% on short-term bonds, just to have a little cash into market crisis. When it comes to performance, this portfolio returned an average of 11.86% per year over the last 10 years, as well as 13.71% over the last five. It looks like this is just the greatest lazy portfolio you can have but now it's time to move to our number one, which is going to be not only lazy, but crazy when it comes to performance. The number one lazy portfolio is composed of one single ETF. You can't get lazier than that. And this ETF returned a whopping 18.7% per year in the last 10 years, 20.85% per year in the last five, and 44.54% in the last 12 months. Before revealing you the ETF of this portfolio, if you still haven't done it, please support my channel with a like, and if you enjoyed this video so far, consider subscribing to the channel and you'll get new videos on finance and investing every week. So, the lazy portfolio I'm talking about is composed of one single ETF that was founded in 1999 by Invesco. And its goal is to capture the performance of the 100 largest non-financial companies listed on the Nasdaq stock market. I'm talking about QQQ, the Invesco QQQ Trust Series 1 ETF. Holdings in QQQ are all innovative companies from different sectors with an overweight on information technology. Of course, if you just want to focus on information technology, you could go for VGT, the Vanguard Information Technology ETF. If you still want to stay by QQQ, but you want to reduce the expense ratio from 0.2 to 0.15%, you can buy QQQM, which is literally the same. And if you are from Europe, you can invest in EQQQ, which is the identical equivalent of QQQ and grew pretty much the same way since the beginning. All right, these were 10 of the best lazy portfolios. I'd love to hear which one interests you the most. And if you want, I can also do separate videos on these portfolios going more into detail. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel, check my investing blog at rick austincom and let's meet again in my next video next Friday. I wish you a great day, people, or evening. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.